Hi, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Praise God. It's good to be with you again this morning. Welcome to any of our first time visitors or return visitors. On behalf of all of our Living Faith family, I just want to say welcome. And uh, I hope that you're blessed by the word today. Uh, I have some announcements before I get into the word or we get into the word together. Um, we're having our marriage ministry is conducting a marriage dare week. This, this week coming, today's Valentine's Day, but this week coming, the couples are encouraged to participate in different activities. Uh, we're going to give out some gifts uh, to certain couples. And um, so make sure you sign up for that. You can sign them online or you can go to our church app. You can find the information underneath this video. Okay. So you want to sign up for that. If you want to participate, it's going to be fun. All right. Also, I want to remind you today uh, we're online because of the weather, because of the, the threat of the freezing rain. So uh, I want you to Please, if you're not on our text blast, which is how we share information when services are canceled and so forth, if you would text LFCC to 313131, that's text LFCC to 313131, that will put you on our text blast for information, okay? All righty, I think that's it. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you and we praise you again. We thank you for this day that you have made. Every day is a good day because you made it, God. And Father, I pray that we don't waste this day, that we would make it count, that we would make it count for you, that we would make it count for the kingdom, that you, that uh, we would make it count for the people that we love um, and want to bless. Father, I pray uh, that you would just bless this time in the word. Uh, Holy Spirit, I, I, uh, I need your help. I um, encourage your help to help me with the word today. Um, Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. And so I just thank you for that. Thank you for, um, for helping me today and helping us to understand the word of God. Amen. All right. Well, today I'm going to continue. Last week I started... Um, uh, a message called Count It All Joy. And so I'm going to continue on that today. Count it all joy and don't move. Don't move. All right. So we're going to we're going to go to James chapter one. And I'm going to start in verse two. And this is the New King James Version. I'm also going to refer to the King James Version. Uh, but uh, the New King James Version uh, in James chapter one, starting verse two, it says, my brethren, of course, that that word is a word that means all all people in the family of God, male and female. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing or the King James Version says, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. We'll come back to that. Verse four, and it says, but let patience have her, the new, the new King James says, have uh, its perfect work, but the, the King James actually says, have her perfect work. And I looked that up and I said, okay, God, why'd you call perfect her? And the word perfect, uh, according to the, uh, the, uh, the lexicon um, or the Bible dictionary, it's, it's, a, um, it's feminine. It's a feminine word. So that's why he said, my brethren, I'm sorry, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Verse six, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Wow, that's, that's pretty heavy. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to be considered a man or a woman uh, who is unstable in all of my ways. Amen. 
So we're talking about counting it all joy. You know, nobody wants to have to go through anything difficult, um, but this, these scriptures say, it says, uh, it's referring to, he's talking to my brethren, which means the whole body of Christ. And he says, my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So we are all going to fall into various tests and trials of all kinds, all kinds. What, what you experienced uh, in 2020 uh, could be totally different than what I experienced in 2020, yet and still we all had to go through tests and trials. Amen? We had to all go through difficulties. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified Version. It says, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or all or fall into various temptations. Amen. Uh, so we want to count it all joy when we, when we, like I said, nobody wants to go through a test or trial, but we will. And the word fall, it implies that you did. We didn't plan it. Who plans a test or a trial, but when we fall, find ourselves in a test or trial, uh, uh, there we want to, uh, James is telling us to count it all joy. And that word count, uh, it's also a bookkeeping term, uh, and it means to just add things up. And so uh, last week I had talked about how, you know, when you, uh, you can consider it all joy, you can deem it all joy. Um, let me see, uh, let me see what uh, definitions I wrote down. Um, when you count it, you consider it all joy, you esteem it all joy, you chalk it up to all joy, amen? So when we, when we find ourselves in a test or trial, immediately our attitude, so uh, counting it all joy, it's, it's describing a predetermined attitude. It's, it's assuming a position. As soon as you find yourself facing a trial, you assume the position of joy. Again, the Amplified says, consider it, consider what? The, uh, the trial. The, the, you've already made the assessment. You've already decided, look, this thing has uh, <clears throat> come upon me, but I'm going to determine what's going to happen. It says, consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials. <clears throat> Let me read verse 3. It says, be assured and understand that that's the word knowing. Uh, the King James Version says knowing, but the Amplified says, be assured and understand. When we are faced with the test or trial, uh, we have to first count it all joy. We have to take the position that I'm going to come out the winner at the end of this thing. The devil's not going to get the best of me. I'm going to come out this thing with everything that I need. Amen. And so it says, be assured and understand that, 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 uh, the Amplified explains the word knowing that way that we can be assured and understand. It's so important that we understand when we hit a, a, a roadblock, when we are faced with the test or trial, when the enemy comes to tempt us to disbelieve God and, and to try to give, get us to give up, we have to, we have to um, cons uh, be assured and understand. We can uh, be assured and understand why, because God is with us. I'm going to jump down and uh, I'm not going to cover this yet, but it says in verse five, now this is the book of James and already in verse five, you're talking about tests and trials being, um, and, and in verse five, right away, almost in verse five, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And I really got blessed by that because being in verse five, so soon in the letter, it just proves that God, God is, uh, James is showing us that God, when we're facing tests and trials, God is there. God is ready. God is willing. God is 
able to assist us. He, there are things that he is ready to do when we uh, find ourselves falling into a test or trial. So God is, in verse 5, God is making himself available, and we'll, we'll get back to that. And so uh, we have to consider, first of all, when we uh, face a test or trial, we're, we have to consider all joy. We have to say, oh, you know, we can go like this. Oh, my God, I have to deal with this right now. Yeah, you have to deal with it. But guess what? It's going to pass. You can get through it. We can win. We can come out the victor. We can come out the better for it. But our attitude has to be, we have to count it all joy, knowing, knowing something, knowing, being assured and understand that the trial, uh, the, um, the word for, um, for trying, the trying of your faith, that it can mean two things. It can mean being tested, or the King James, the Amplified says, it could be a trial or it could be a proving. The trying of your faith can be a trial, which the enemy, he wants to put us on trial. He wants to put us in the witness stand. He wants to grill us. He wants to break us down like a prosecutor. So, so when we find ourselves in a test or, or trial, we have to take, we take the, the upper position. We take the upper hand. We be the aggressor. We be the one that determines beforehand. We have to determine beforehand. We can't, when we find ourselves in the test and trial, even though like, oh my God, not, not this, what happened? But we have to determine, no, okay, all right, I'm, I'm pushing through this thing. I'm going to get through this thing. This thing, this test, this trial is not going to wipe me out. I'm going to prove the enemy wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, in other words, we're going to count it all joy and we're going to be the ones that have to decide we're going to prove. I, I wrote that the word proof, it means um, the word proving. I wrote a note in my Bible and it says, when we're proving something, we're proving something that is all, that, something that already exists. And so we're proving when we, are facing faced with a test or trial, we are we are supposed to prove what already exists. This is an opportunity for us to prove what already exists. Amen. And so, um, uh, let me read the um, in the Passion Translation. It says. My fellow believers, I think I shared this last week. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Amen. To look at it, look at it. You know, um, it's very important how we look at things. If you know, so we have to make sure that living this life of faith, we don't look at everything like defeat or an opportunity for defeat, but to look at it as an opportunity to win. Amen. And to look at it every dip, to look at every difficulty as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that we can. Amen. So it sounds crazy, but a test or trial, at the end of it, we can end up being the ones with the joy. Amen? Praise God. So, but we have to know this. Let, let's uh, keep reading some more. Uh, my brethren, this is the New King James again. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the, the testing or the trying of your faith produces patience, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That, that is God's goal. So when this test and trials come, test and trial comes, when it presents itself, we have to be ready. We have to be ready to know at the end of this thing, I'm still going to have everything that I need, 
everything that I need. I want to share with you uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse, um, verse 32. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32. You know, uh, Mark chapter 4, Jesus, he gives the parable of the, of the seed sower, and he says that, uh, that some seed that was sown, uh, it was sown on stony ground, and uh, that Satan comes immediately to steal the word that was sown into the heart. Amen? So Satan comes immediately. Satan's job, because uh, this past Wednesday we talked about he's an adversary. He is anti-righteousness. So he is our adversary. He is our enemy. So he seeks out every opportunity to, um, to cause us to fail. You know, God's uh, the reason why I got so excited about God in verse 5 in James 1, that God is right there. Look, you, okay, you're in this test, you're in this trial, don't, don't be concerned, I'm going to help you out, just, I'm going to help you out, calm down, calm down, just, I'm here, I'm here, what do you need, amen, but on the other hand, so God is here to help us, to prove, to help us prove what we already should know, that we have the faith to endure, amen, but Hebrews chapter 10, this is another way um, that Satan comes to, uh, to um, attack us. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32, and it says, But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with suffering. I'm going to read that in the Amplified. It says, but be ever mindful of the days gone by in which after you were first spiritually enlightened, you endured a great and painful struggle. What am I saying? This scripture is saying that once we, once we read the word, you know, when the, when the word is sown into our hearts and it takes root and, and that word is, is you, we're meditating on that word, we're confessing that word, and we're waiting for, for, for the fruit of that word to, be, uh, to uh, begin to be produced in our lives where it manifests and we're going to see the promise of God. Uh, but while that is happening, the enemy comes. Let's say, um, let's say you just started believing God uh, for Deuteronomy 8.18, that God gives me the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. And, and so you're believing God for that. You're telling your family, you're telling your friends. And then, so we could call that as spiritual enlightenment. You became spiritually enlightened. And so, but this scripture is telling us in Hebrews 10 and 32, that we, when we become spiritual, spiritually enlightened, that the enemy comes to cause us uh, or to, to bring afflictions and tests and trials in our lives to, to, to test, test us to see if we really mean what we say and what we're believing God for. Amen. So he comes, let's say you're believing God that God, I just trust you. I'm going to, I'm going to break this family curse in Jesus name. Uh, I'm, I'm going to break this curse of, of always being poor, always living in lack. Um, always having, uh, always not having enough. And then you've been spiritually enlightened. This is what you're standing on. This is what you're believing God for. And then all of a sudden you lose your job, right? All of a sudden you lose your job. And it's like, now we could just fall out, right? <laughs> we could just fall out and say, oh my God, what in the world is happening but you and I need to know that once we have decided to believe God, that the, that the word of God has been opened up to us and we decide we're going to stand on one of God's promises, we have to be prepared. Now, uh, uh, it, it comes in different forms and fashions, different times, um, but we have to just know that the enemy is going to come to, to take away the word out of our hearts to to uh, to put our light out to prove to us that 
God didn't mean that, you know, uh, that's not what he really meant. Or if he said it, he didn't mean it for you. And so, um, so then we, we lose our job. Well, what are we going to do? First of all, we have to count it all joy, count it all joy. And we have to be prepared that I lost my job. Deuteronomy 818 is still true. I'm still believing that God gives me the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant, even though I just lost my job. So I'm going to, we're going to take the position. We're going to assume the position of joy. We're going to assume the position of victory. Amen. And so uh, let's go back to James chapter one. And um, in James chapter one, um, let's say you lost your job. Uh, in verse five, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, I'm trying, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I want to explain uh, some words here. Um, but God is going to help you. Um, uh, God wants to give you insight. God wants to give us wisdom. God wants us to know what's going on. God wants you to know why you lost your job, how you lost your job. God wants to tell you what's your next step, what's your next move. I remember years ago uh, when um, I had stopped working and um, actually my job laid me off. They laid off some uh, people in our um, computer programming department. But uh, Pastor Lamont and I, we decided um, we wanted to get a house, buy a house, and then I needed a job. So I went, uh, I prayed, I, I went back to the company, applied for a new job. Uh, they called me in a few days and they said, we don't have money in the budget. Right now, this is this is this was a, a test. It was a test, and so um, so they called back and and you know I called Pastor Lamont. I said they said they don't have any money in the budget. You know that they can't hire me right now. And Pastor Lamont said, "Look, Connie, this is what you're believing for. This is what we're believing God for that you get a job back in that company." And so he encouraged me, and, and remember, this was a test. I could have, I could have uh, refuted what Pastor Lamont said. I could have ignored what he said. I could have just cried and fell out and just say, oh, God doesn't listen to me. You know, this faith stuff doesn't work. Um, and so, but, but he encouraged me, and, and I, I went and stood back on my faith. I, I, I I got back into a position. I assumed my position of joy. I assumed my position of um, having uh, nothing missing, being entire, wanting nothing. Guess what? Uh, uh, and I don't remember how long it was. It was no more. It was no longer than two weeks. I can tell you that. They called me back and they said we found money in the budget and we can hire you back. Well. That was an opportunity. Pastor Lamont and I were agreeing that we that I get back into that company to get a job because we needed two incomes. The enemy came. He he operated through those people. Didn't find any money. I continued to stand on faith, and I came out in the end with what I wanted. And so I just I changed my attitude. I went. I took up uh, again. I took my position of faith. Amen. And. I got what I was believing God for. Amen? All right. Uh, let me look at uh, some things here. Uh, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the trying or testing of your faith produces patience. Listen, when we are, when we are faced with a test or trial that that this is going to be approving of our faith. Where do we stand? What are we made of? What do we believe in God for? But this test or trial, it's, it's, um, it's, it's going to prove the testing of your faith produces patience. The testing, the trying of your faith produces patience. The testing and trying of your faith produces patience. Patience. 
We need patience. But guess that guess what? That word patience, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean patience like just waiting, you know, la 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 di da. No, it it really means endurance. That word endurance, the word patience there, which really means endurance, is the is the Greek Greek word hupomone. Hupomone. And it means cheerful or hopeful. It means um cheerful or hopeful endurance. It means steadfast. So the trying of our faith produces cheerful or hopeful endurance. It means that word uh, patience there, which is really where endurance, it means steadfast. It means constancy. It means patient continuance. Um, I, I wrote here, it means staying power. So the trying of our faith, the proving of our faith it, it produces endurance in us. It, it, um, when we are tried, when our faith is tried, it produces staying power. But it's not just any staying power. It's supernatural staying power. Amen? Um, let me see. Let me uh, look at that in the King James Version. It says... Um, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience or worketh endurance. That word worketh, and, and I'm going to have to end here, but that word worketh, I, I love uh, all the scriptures that um, where God wants to use his power. You know, we can't do these things. We can't, we can't come through a test or trial um, without God's help. We can't. Uh, we don't have enough willpower. We don't have enough human ability. Whatever we do, whenever we are experience victory, it's going to be because we are trusting in God's power. Yes, we're born-again Christians, but we need the power of God. You know, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Be strong in what? Be strong in the Lord and what? And the power of his might. So that scripture is not telling us to be strong in our might, even though our strength is involved. But more importantly, he's saying be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so God always wants his, God always makes his power available to us. So really in this chapter, James chapter one, God is telling us, look, I, I, I can give you, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going, I can give you steps. Um, I can um, tell you, I can tell you what to do next. But on top of that, I can give you my endurance. So again, that word, um, uh, that word worketh, it means energy. It's, it's uh, from two words and it means energy, energy, that comes down energy that works throughout so when in other words when we're being tested and tried when we're in the middle of a trial god wants to make his energy his power available to us it's his supernatural i put supernatural staying power god is going to uh, join up with us as we trust him as we stand in a position of of joy as we stand in a position of I'm going to win I'm coming out with everything that I need at the end of this thing this thing is not going to kill me this thing is not going to uh, topple my house this thing is not going to destroy me this thing is not going to destroy my family because I'm going to experience the working of God's power again it says um, let me read that one more time Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience or works endurance. And uh, again, that means energy. That means that God wants to make his supernatural staying power. He will cause his power to energize us, to work through us, causing us to be able to stand in this situation. Again, our willpower can't do it. We don't have enough power. We need God's help. 
say, I need God's help in every test or trial. I need God's help to prove, to prove what already exists, which means my faith exists. My trust in God exists. My victory already exists. Amen. So God, he's going to work it endurance. We need endurance to stand. Amen. We need endurance to stand. And so endurance is a strong word. Uh, again, it means to, um, it means staying power. You know, um, when people, sometimes you ask people how are they doing and they may say, oh, I'm hanging in there. Well, that uh, endurance, godly endurance, supernatural endurance is hanging in there to the end, hanging all the way in there. We don't quit. We don't give up. We're going to make it through. Amen. Uh, again, when I, I, I believe God for that job, that, that, that I was facing this trial. Look, we wanted to buy a house. That was a test. That was a trial. But, uh, but I decided to continue to believe God, which is what we have to do every time we face a test or trial. So we have to know something. We have to count it all joy when we face these things. We have to know that the, the trying and the testing of your faith, it actually produces endurance. We need to come out stronger. We need to get stronger as the people of God, right? So we can prove in these tests and trials, we can prove that we have faith in God. We can prove that God is for us and not against us. It says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience or let endurance have her perfect work. Let endurance have her perfect work. Remember the word patience, it really means endurance. It, does, it doesn't just mean waiting, but it means standing strong. It means standing firm. It means standing, maintaining your position of faith. Amen. You know, it says here, um, that, that God says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be what it will be given to him. Verse six, but let him ask in faith, let him ask in faith with no doubting. The King James version says nothing wavering for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. In other words, taking a position of faith means taking a position of endurance, of supernatural staying power. In other words, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I am staying put. I am going to um, stay put. God's supernatural power is going to help me. He's going to work worketh. He's going to energize, supernaturally energize me. Uh, I'm going to read one more verse. I think this is so important because um, we just have to realize we are not by ourselves. When we face these things, we don't need to feel like we're by ourselves because God is with us. Remember, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of whose might? His might, not my might. I'm too weak without God's power and without God's help. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, a familiar scripture, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceeding, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, how? According to the power that works in us. There we go again. God, he, 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 that word worketh, he's going to worketh in us. He's going to energize us. He's going to help us uh, so that we can develop our endurance, so we can develop our staying power, our standing power. We're not doing this by ourselves. You know, we can't read a book to do this. We can't, we can't take a course to get through this. No, we're going to have to trust God and he's, he's going to energize us to be able to stand. The Amplified Version in Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who by inconsequence 
the action of his power that is at work within us. God's work, God's power is at work within us to help us. Look, and it says, is able to carry out his purpose. <laughs> Glory to God. We have access to the power of God in us to carry out God's purpose and to do uh, super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Amen. So we want to count it all joy and we want to, uh, to uh, not be moved. Don't budge when you find yourself in a test and trial and you will, because you will be tested by the enemy. He wants to come and take the, the spiritual illumination, uh, the, to take, take the spiritual Hebrews 10 32. It says, after you were illuminated, you suffered, a tr you suffered trials. And so when we decide it, this is part of our training, this is part of being a believer. This is part of us getting toughened up. This is part of us knowing who we really are in Christ Jesus. When we go through these tests and trials, it toughens us up. It gives, it gives us staying power. It keeps us from being shaken. It keep, keeps us from moving. Amen. And so we just have to realize this is just a part of being a Christian. But guess what? God wants us to come out. He wants us to come out of this. He wants us to come out on the other side of this, lacking nothing, lacking nothing, not lacking a job. If you lost your job, at the end of this trial, the proving of your faith, you're going to come out with a trial, with a, a job. Amen. You're going to come out with your provision. You're going to come out with your business. You're going to, you're going to come out on the other side with your healing being manifested. If you endure, if you allow God to, to, uh, energize you supernaturally energize you, he wants to work it in you and worketh in me so that we can see the promise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, I pray in Jesus name that you would give us all the, um, the, uh, the revelation of when we fall into various tests and trials that we can truly count on all joy. We can take that position from day one and, and, and with your help and with your power, working in us and with us and for us, we are going to see our victory. And we just thank you for it. We, we thank you for, we trust you. Thank you for energizing us. Thank you for working in us um, and working endurance. And we're not going anywhere. We are not moving until we see what we're believing God for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for tithes and offerings. Amen. Praise God. And um, uh, uh, I'm running out of time. I wanted to share 1 Kings chapter 17, where, um, where God told uh, a woman that, uh, that, that a, a widow woman was going to sustain him. And uh, when he went... And he saw the widow, this is 1 Kings chapter 17, of uh, the woman, he approached the woman, and uh, I, I love it here that it says, uh, God told uh, Elijah, he says, look, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Amen? He commanded. Uh, somebody uh, taught me years ago that the word commanded, it means to already set in order. Um, I also wrote to give charge. Uh, I've already given a widow woman a charge to sustain you. I've already appointed a w this widow woman to sustain you. I've already ordained this woman to sustain you. And so uh, the, the story goes that uh, she said, I'm just going to, I don't have any bread. I don't have a loaf of bread. All I have is this meal and a, a little bit of meal, a little bit of uh, oil. And I'm going to gather these sticks. I'm going to go and make 
a cake for me and my son, and then we're going to die. In other words, she didn't have enough to live. They didn't have enough to live off of. This was the last of them. Now, uh, you, we have to, uh, I love this story because not only did God command the widow woman to sustain him, what he brought to the, to the table was the word of God and a miracle of God. And he said, look, you make me a cake first. Uh, and I always look at this as uh, seeking the kingdom of God first. I look at this scripture to see how when we put God first, when we uh, tithe means 10%, we put him first. When we seek first the kingdom of God, we put God first, uh, him and his righteousness, what he says, a, a tenth uh, means, uh, uh, tithe means a tenth of all of our increase. And she, she did what the man of God says. In verse 15, uh, in verse 15, it says, and she did, remember Elijah said, make me a cake first and then you and your son eat. And she did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. I read somewhere um, that many days, it meant approximately a year um, or, or longer. I don't remember exactly. And it says, the jar of meal was not spent, nor did the bottle of oil fail. According to the word, this is the Amplified, in First uh, Kings 17, and verse 16. The jar of meal was not spent, nor did the bottle of oil fail, according to the word which the Lord spoke unto Elijah. Amen. And so, um, when she made a cake for him first, that was, that was equivalent to... Um, putting God first. He was the prophet. He was the man of God. He was, uh, 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 prophets were uh, are intercessors uh, for God. They were uh, uh, the voice of God. They brought the word of God. So God told prophets what to say. And then when we carry out what the prophet says, then we reap a prophet's reward. And so when she put the man of God first, the prophet of God first, that was like putting God first because she perceived that he was a man of God. Amen. And so it all went well for her and she ate for many days. And so it is with us when we put God first, when we put our tithe and, and offering into God's hands, he makes sure he makes sure when we do it in faith, when we don't waver, amen, when we don't waver, when we um, count everything as joy, we are going to see our harvest amen and god is going to take care of us and uh so that story always blesses me uh if you're uh, uh all all the ways to give uh are underneath this video you can look at the different ways to give but you can give by going online to lfccnj.com forward slash giving you can text to give lfccnj by texting lfccnj to 77977 or you can mail in your tithe to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, 08110. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your provisions. God, we present this tithe to you. We present this offering to you. God, we put you first. So, Father, we thank you. According to your word in Malachi chapter 3, when we bring the tithes into the storehouse, that you will open the heavens and pour us out a blessing. So, Father, we thank you that we operate under an open heaven right now in Jesus' name because your word says so and because we trust your word. So, Father, we just thank you for blessing our lives and that we will experience your provision with nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen. Woohoo! Praise the Lord. All right, again, we're having our marriage dare this week, so make sure you go online and go uh, go on our app to apply for the marriage dare week. It's for the whole week, and um, I think uh, we're... Um, so uh, do that. Have some fun with your spouse and um, uh, just have fun with each other. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well... I call you blessed. Again, welcome to all of our visitors. Thanks, Thank you for being with us today. I call you blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember, text LFCC 
to 313131 so you can be a part of our text blast. Amen. To keep keep up to date with weather and so forth. Praise the Lord. And again, happy Valentine's Day. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Blessed, happy, fortunate, power to prosper, and to be envied. Amen. God bless you.